You are listening to the Life Training Audio Series, designed to assist you in the building of your life business. While no one can guarantee the following techniques and approaches will work for you, we do hope they contribute to the building of a strong and profitable business. For more information, please visit our website at www.the-team.biz. Fantastic. Well, that was, I'm thoroughly impressed with myself after that introduction. <laughs> a little nervous to speak in front of myself now. That, that was, I, I am super excited. You know, Lisa does send her love to you guys all the way up until Tuesday. She was planning on coming with me today. And um, it's crazy because those of you that have children before, I, I was, I, I better say this and try to be nice about it, but she's, her belly's about as big as it is already as it was the last child we had at full term. So, if you can feel her pain, she's, <laughs> so, and I, and I give her so much credit because she's, we've built this entire business, so I'm going to share with you guys. So the day we saw this idea, we had a two-year-old. And so we had the normal issues with babysitters, first child, we both had full-time jobs, and we were starting in this process. And then along the way, we had child two and three, again, both girls, and so learned to build it through that, being Lisa being pregnant, having new newborns, and we've done all through that, and now she's pregnant with twins, and it's still, like, I had to really tell her and put my foot down and say, you're not going with. I can't let you because I see she'll go out. We were out Tuesday night at the open meeting and she was just serving her team. And so she can't just sit down. I'm like, at least just sit in the corner, let people come do. No, she's up walking around the open meeting. And I'm like, why do you do that? You know, but that's just her heart. She just truly, I mean, she did all that stuff to get our dreams. Now she does it to help you guys get your dreams. So I know she really would want to be here with you guys. So let me kind of jump in. I know there's probably people that are brand new in the room tonight. And I was, you know, I come and give the first talk. And I know me as a mechanic would listen to that first talk like, okay, what in the world is this about? Like, how does that help me? Teach me how to build business. Teach me how to make some money at this thing. I, I don't want to be a mechanic anymore. I don't want to be a good mechanic. That's a bad attitude, but I learned that later. But uh, who here notices that the employment quadrant of the world is just a little bit less stable than it used to be? All right? It's like, it's, how, who in here knows somebody that has lost their job in the last 18 months, right? We, we all do. Like, there's chaos going on out there. And here we come with this idea that says, what if we could start to help entrepreneurs succeed and create their own business and create some um, security and, and go, go after their goals and dreams? And if you look through those three C's, if you start from community. I, I actually went to a gentleman's house the other morning, and uh, I was sharing this idea with him. And I didn't even have a piece of paper. I just started talking with the guy. And this, I knew he was a 10%er because as I'm sitting there talking to him, I could see on his night's corner table, what do they call it? Coffee table. No, what's the corner one called? End table. There you go. I said, nightstand. I'm like, what are you doing in his bedroom? And I was in <laughs> the corner table. And oh, man. Sorry, Chris. And uh, so it was sitting there on the, the, the end table. And I looked over, and it was a list of 105 things he wants to accomplish in his life. I'm like, man, I remember the first time somebody told me to do that in this business, and I got to 13, I'm like, um, socks without holes in them. 14, like I had a really hard time coming up with some better life because I wasn't a dreamer back then. I, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't. I didn't believe I could ever accomplish it. And, and what we're trying to do is we go out into the world, and we're trying to find people who want a better life, who say, I want more out of life. And my assumption is, if you came in this room tonight on a Saturday night, you want more out of life. That's why you're here, both your life and the life business. That, that's what we teach people. And we want you to start to get a little bigger picture of where you could go in your life. It, it's funny, uh, yesterday before we had this great leadership meetings in Madison, Wisconsin, and uh, uh, right before I left, um, you know, it's kind of funny because where we had the event, it was like the closest an event's ever been in my life. It was two miles from my house. Like for 10 years, every event I've ever gone to has been over an hour. And now they're like two miles from my house. So go figure. <laughs> yeah. But so I'm, I'm at there and we're potty training my 21-year-old, my, my youngest little girl right now. And the goal is to get her out of diapers before the next two get into diapers. <laughs> so there she is. So we're in the one bathroom. And I get her little Dora seat, you know, with the handles on it and put her on there. And she's going awesome. And she points over to the side on the floor and she says, Daddy, airplane, helicopter airplane helicopter and look over and there's a private jet magazine so she picks it up and she's sitting there looking at private jets <laughs> and she's going to the back i should have a picture up but i don't have that any appropriate but she was looking at it and she's she goes i like daddy i like you know and she's dreaming 20 month old talking about private jets like her her mind is totally limitless to what she can accomplish but <laughs> so 
the thought was like, get that feeling back. Like I can accomplish anything I want if I plug into the right information, the right people, and the right vehicle. You can literally accomplish anything. And, and I always say, I'm so thankful for, for Lisa and I getting introduced to this. And I think one of the reasons we've succeeded is so God could point to us and say, look, we can even take a mechanic and make them that successful. Right? And nothing, I said nothing against mechanic, but I just, I didn't have a business background. I didn't, I didn't know how to speak in front of people. I was terrified of people. My first bunch of meetings, I would sneak in the back, sit in the back corner, and leave before it got over so nobody could talk to me. That's just where I was when I saw this. But every time I heard this little idea, it just, it, something inside of me said, man, there's going to be a better life. There, there's something more I can do. And it just drove me to go dig deeper into these areas. So as I'm sitting there talking with this guy, he already has that spark. And here, here's how I got him started in our community. I said, look, I said, we're right now in the early phases. Our company's only a little over a year old. We're putting together a community of entrepreneurs, and we're going to have the most highly educated, motivated entrepreneurs the world has ever seen over the next five years, and we're just wondering if you want to join us in this. And he's like, he's like, well, it sounds interesting. He goes, what are you guys doing? I said, well, if you had a group of entrepreneurs that you wanted to be the most educated, you'd probably want to get an education source. And I said, so what we learned was, if we got all these entrepreneurs that are excited about improving their lives, we're going to go get education and materials from somewhere. And I said, so we could either go to Barnes and Noble and make them millions of dollars, billions of dollars, or we could go to, to Maxwell or all these other great leadership guys. And we could, we need education to become good entrepreneurs. We're going to get it from somewhere. And I said, it just dawned on us. Why don't we just create our own company, buy all those great information from ourselves. And instead of somebody else, the entrepreneurs will split up the money as a group. And he goes, he goes I'm in. He goes, I already buy books. I'm already learning this stuff. I want to be a part of this. See, he didn't care. I didn't have to show him anything else. He's just like, so what you're saying is you guys are have these educated communities. We get to share in the money that we educate? I said, yep, that's it. He's like, all right, I'm in. And he gets started. And so now it's going to take a little more than that to build a business. It doesn't always go that easy. <laughs> but I just happened to find a leader that was looking. And so, so he, here's my point with that. The, what we're doing right now, that's really what we're doing. So you guys just represent a group of people. You're a small fraction of the people within a 100-mile radius. Would you agree? I mean, what percentage you'd say you are, but you're less than 10% of a 100-mile radius sitting in this room. And so we have a lot of growth to get to even the 10%. But what we're trying to do is we are literally trying to create the sharpest group of entrepreneurs the world has ever seen. And here I can prove it's going to happen because watch this. Who in the room has read a book or listened to audios to improve themselves or their business in the last 30 days? Like everybody, like I've spoken in front of corporations, different organizations. I can't ask that question anywhere else and get a fraction of the hands to go up like you guys just did. You're doing something unique. And maybe you're like me. I started doing that just because I was paid to do it. Like I remember the first time my mentor came to me and he handed me a book called The Five Love Languages. It was purple with flowers on it. Has anybody ever read that one? Now, mechanics, I would get beat with a wrench if I took that to work, right? <laughs> so, but I remember grabbing it. And reading it, so I was sitting in my car at the break, at lunch breaks and stuff, and I would read this book. And I remember, just, just let me give you something simple. Like, I never would have picked this book up as a mechanic. But I remember thinking, here's the gist of the book, is that we tend to treat people the way we like to be treated. So we show love to others the way we like to be loved. And so if you are constantly buying some people gifts, you're probably a gifts, is one of your love languages, and you probably like to receive gifts. And so I was the type of guy who I like, I'm words of affirmation is my love language. So now y'all know, say nice things about me, it makes me feel good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so that's just, that's just who I am. You know, my wife says something to me, it, it makes me feel good. You know, power of a woman's words. So that was really crucial for me. So I would always tell Lisa, oh, you look so great today, Lisa. I like your shirt. I, I would give her all these compliments and she'd just be like, oh, thanks. And she'd walk away. I'm like, man, you make me work so darn hard. To, I mean, how do I, you know, how do I do this? I'm reading this book one day. And I flip to the part, and it, it starts explaining this, and all of a sudden it dawns on me, Lisa's acts of service is her love language. And all of a sudden I start thinking of all the times she nagged me to take the, I mean, asked me to take the garbage out. <laughs> I'm like, that's why, because that's important to her. So I remember going home that night, and the garbage was just a little bit overflowing, not bad. And I, I was in the kitchen, and as soon as she came around the corner, I ran over and I started to take the garbage out. <laughs> Smiled at her. And, without being nagged. And she came over, gave me the biggest kiss, made me an awesome dinner. I'm like, this is crazy. <laughs> so I go back to work. I'm like, I got to finish this chapter. This is gold. And I start reading further. And next day I do the dishes for her. Same response. I'm like, this is priceless information. Like, where was this in my life? And the point with that was I never would have picked that stuff up as a mechanic. I never would have. And it, just those little things changed everything for us. And so the power of this information in your life, if you choose to use it, will be radical. It truly will be radical. Like Chris Brady says, you don't know what you don't know. 
It's probably not the stuff that you know that's hurting you. It's probably the stuff you don't know. It was hurting me that I didn't know that that was Lisa's love language. And I didn't even know I didn't know. And so to get through this process, we have to teach people those things. So let me kind of back right up now. Because we're going to build this giant community of highly educated people uh, through this training program. But I want to teach you now, the life side of what we do, the life training side, is we're going to, we have like a marketing system that's going to help you get started, market this information to the world, and build your community so you can be a successful business owner. And you're going to have to learn leadership along the way. You're going to have to learn people skills along the way. You're going to have to learn all those things. But we have such a good system. We were talking backstage at how bad you can be and still kind of get a business going. Like, you don't have to be good to start. You have to start to get good. You have to get in the process and get up and rolling and mess some stuff up and be willing to be bad long enough so you can figure out how to get good. But you can build a pretty successful business. I think I, I walked away from my job before I, I really understood the business totally and was good at it. I was just really good at plugging people into the business system and just smiling. I was quiet. I didn't say much. I remember reading that Frank Betcher book and realizing it said, he who speaks last loses. I'm like, great. I don't have to talk much. Like... <laughs> Like, that's the strength of being shy. I just shut up and look at them. <laughs> you know, and they, they dig the next step. So let me walk through a couple of things. And I want to I wanna walk you through, because here are some important things. The way you get started in your first couple months in business can either radically accelerate the growth of your business or radically slow down the growth of your business. The key is, are you getting started right? And are you doing the right steps early? So that's what duplicates. Or are you doing the wrong things? And that's what duplicates. There's a saying that says, people will do 100% of what you do wrong and only 50% of what you do right. The reason being is when you do something wrong, it's probably because it was the easy way out. So of course, Bastiat's Law says, people will take the easiest path anytime they're given the opportunity. So if you cut a corner somewhere, it's almost for sure your team's going to cut that same corner. It just happens. And so if you want to grow a fast business, the key is figure out what all the things are you should be doing right and do them right as soon as possible and do them as good as soon as possible. Like Do those things because at least then you're you're giving the right example for people to follow. And if you do that, you'll probably be like me where people that I got started beat me to Turbo 10, Turbo 25, Turbo 50, and Turbo 100. I was passed to, to all those levels because they were better in the beginning than I was at this business. And so when I plugged them into the system, they already had some skill sets so they could grow faster while I was developing myself. Now, that drove me crazy and ticked me off. So I beat them to round table and policy council because I was upset. <laughs> but, and, and they're great people. But it just, that's the cool part about the business. Anybody can go at any speed they want. You just got to be willing to learn. And I'm so thankful that it was a business they could pass me because that motivated me to do more and get better. So let me walk you through. If you're brand new or if you're going to start somebody tomorrow. And so here's the other side of it. The more you do right in the beginning, the better your business will duplicate. And if you're a leader... The better you get at starting people properly, the bigger your business will get and the faster it'll go. Because again, remember, we're a leadership organization. People are looking to be led. And sometimes we let our team lead us. And so the key is, is learn to lead your team. Sometimes telling them the right steps to do is uncomfortable, but it's still the right thing to do. I mean, if they don't want to do them, that's okay. But you got to tell them the right thing so you're not slowing them down. Because if you get uh, Chris and Kara and you're showing them the plan tomorrow and you don't show them all the proper steps, and they want to run at this, and you leave a couple things out because you're trying to make it easier for them, you might just lose your biggest leader in five years from today just because you shortcutted a process. And so let's talk about So if we're going to talk a little bit tonight about the Power Player program. I know you guys have heard this a lot, but that literally, Power Players, when we studied building communities, because we get paid to expand communities and, and have more products and services flow through those communities. And so the way we expand it is we've created a, a systematic way to help you go out and grow your community. And I've been involved long enough now, almost 10 years. We haven't had a job in over six years now, either of us. So it's a good business. But it has to duplicate properly to do that. But And and I can tell you that the people that I get started, that I watch follow what I'm about to teach you, they succeed. And the people who do not follow it, they either don't succeed for a long time until they figure out how to do it, or they quit and drift away. It's just just the nature of the business. I had somebody tell me the other day, Oh, they, I said something like that. And they're like, oh, see? So not everybody succeeds at this. I said, nope, not everybody does. And they looked at me like, you're going to admit that? Yeah. What in life does everybody succeed at? Nothing. I mean, half the people in this country get in front of their pastor and say, I promise I'm with her forever. And then they quit on it. So why are we expected to make everybody succeed when there's nothing that everybody succeeds at? Here's the question is, or here's the statement, is everybody can succeed it's just not everybody will succeed. But it's not the business's fault. It's, it's somebody's fault. 
And I'll let you decide who. But, and as soon as I saw this, as soon as I got started and I watched other people succeed at this, that's why the most important thing you could do for your team right now is to move on to the next level. Because when you're brand new, you come here tonight and you saw some people recognized, you're probably going to see some people next get recognized, and you're going to remember them at that stage in the business. And a couple months from now, you're going to watch them at a new stage of the business. And then you're going to have to say to yourself, self, this works. (laughs) I've watched them go from there to there. I can't deny it works. Now, the only question is, will I decide to work it? Will I decide to learn to get good at these steps? Because it's obviously working. You just can't deny it at that point. So here's what Power Player says. The first thing, in order to go power player, you have to get started. And the bet, so maybe there's some people that started, but if you're started, and so the way we've designed this is we wanted to make it as systematic as possible, yet it still requires a leader to run it, but we're going to give you every crutch possible in the beginning, because who in here knows, anytime you start something new, you're at your most incompetent. Isn't that fair to say? Like, when you started your job, you were at your most incompetent. You had to learn some stuff. I still remember when we brought our first child home. I couldn't believe they sent a life home with us. <laughs> I was at my most incompetent of being a father at that moment, and I had a child to raise, right? And so when you start this business, we understand that. So we try to put systems in place to help you get off to a faster start than you're probably qualified to do. But what everybody, what I see a lot is people then try and shortcut our system and try and say, well, but I can, if I can save somebody a little money in the beginning, I'm going to save them some money. You're not saving them. You're hurting them. Maybe you're here tonight because you got started in the last 30 days and this is your first meeting because those tickets were included. I think that's genius. So it's your, your first time you get introduced to this, right? And it's because we know that this, that's the most important next step a new person could take is to come to one of these environments. And before we did that, so many people would be afraid to promote the ticket so they wouldn't invite them. And the person would miss the seminar and then that person may never proceed in the business. So we know your best chance of success is get you here as fast as possible. Your best chance. And so we included that in the process. But we also include a couple other things. When you get started for this, see, the owners of the company, we decided we didn't make this company so we could get wealthy off the backs of others. We made this company so together this whole community can create success together as a team. So we didn't form the company to make money. We actually formed it to pay money, which is very different than most companies. Right? And so for the first time ever... The founders of this company are still in the field doing the dirty work just like you guys do. We got to still go into living rooms and help new people. We thought if we could have the owners continue to do the process that we asked the new person to do, we'll have the best business in the world because it's always constantly going to be refined because the way we get paid is the way you get paid. So if the bonus plan's not working well, well, it hurts us too. We got to fix it. We had to sign the same member agreement you had to sign. We have to abide by all the same rules you have to abide. That's how we make our income. So what it does is if if you understand that piece, I believe it's why we'll be the biggest company in the world someday because nobody else is doing it. Everybody else, the owners, make money for being owners, right? So that's why we did. So the $89, we didn't say there's a fee involved. We said, no, let's waive all the fees because we're a debt-free company. We owe nobody anything. We own everything we have. So let's, let's get everything to the new person to give them the best chance of getting started fast. So 89 bucks, you get the books, the CDs. But here's something else we ask you to do. We ask you to try the life subscription. So when somebody gets started, we waive the cost of all the websites if they'll just try at least one cycle of either the life or LLR subscription. Why? If you're not willing to at least try the product you plan on representing, doesn't that make sense? Like I have somebody, well, I don't know if I want to be on that subscription. Well, then what's the point of signing up? There's really no point to it then. That's like paying to join a bowling team, buying the t-shirt and the shoes, and they ask you to show up on Saturday. For, oh, no, I'm not going to play. I just wanted to spend the registration money and sign up. I'm not going to show up and do anything. That doesn't make any sense. Like, why would you even do that? That's kind of, that does, that's totally, doesn't make any sense. And then the other side of this is the life training. The life training is something that we, everybody, every single person I get started, I get them started on the life training. And I tell them, I at least want you to try one full cycle of the life training. And then they'll waive the website for the life training and all that education. You get that off for free. Why? I had somebody tell me, what if my guy says he just wants to hold a spot and listen to life materials? Fantastic. He's still getting 30 days of life training. Why? Because he or she doesn't know what they don't know. And I said, I'm not being fair to you if I don't give you at least a 30-day sample of the business side as well so you can learn how that side works. Otherwise, you don't know how it works. And I don't want you to miss out on it. I don't want me to be the reason that you miss out. So I tell everybody, give me 60 days where you take an honest look at our entire business, then decide what you want to do with it. And isn't it funny, like so many people are like, well, I'm going to need to do a little more research before I get started. I'm like, really? Like when you decided to be a doctor, if you were a doctor in the room, you didn't say, okay, but you have to make sure I understand completely what it all entails to be a doctor, how it all works, how, you know. No, you decide, I think I want to be a doctor. You sign up for college, you pay for 
9, 10, 12 years of college, you learn how to be a doctor in the process, then you can go pursue an income, right? Isn't that how everything works? So what we're saying is start right, but give us 60 days where you're willing to try all the pieces. And after that, you can decide what you do with it. But if you don't give it an honest look and look at all the pieces in the first 60 days, you're not going to understand what you're in and it's going to hurt you. And usually I'll write back to and I'll say, now you told me you'd like this to replace your wife's income. I'm telling you, it's not going to replace your wife's income unless you check out all this stuff and understand it. It's not fair. That's like saying, I want to be a doctor, but I don't want to go to the schools and the books and stuff like that. Just give me a scalpel, a white suit. I'm good to go. (laughs) You wouldn't want that doctor, right? So understand, don't give people that out. Let them them understand this is crucial to their success. Everything's optional, but so is success. And and what you're saying is when you've succeeded, you understand the value of all these pieces. So promote it like, like it's required because it really is for success. So I get them started. They get the life subscription. They get life training. Then, then here's where it goes a little far. So everybody gets started that way. But here's when you start to go into the power player world, what a power player needs to do is a couple of things. A power player is going to want to stay on the life subscription. And then it's ideal to add the LLR one. So you actually have two life subscriptions, two different products. A power player is going to stay on the life training, or if you're not now, get on the life training and be involved in the training. And there's two other components, the life library and life live. A power player is going to be subscribing to all four of these components. Yeah, it's, yeah, those that have been involved understand the significance of that. So here's what we want to do. We want to say, okay, let me, I'm going to paint you the picture for if you said, I want to build this business, what do I need to do? This is it. You need to generate 200 points. You want to be involved in these subscriptions. Now, within the first six months, here's what we encourage you to do. Go out and get some customers. Go share this with people and develop a customer base that are buying from them. That counts towards your volume. You get paid on it too. So we have some people that say, man, money's really tight right now. I don't know if I can afford all those different steps. Well, let's get you some customers as fast as possible. You get 25% of the profits instantly for every customer you sign up. And then if you do three customers, you get your stuff for free. So, I mean, there's very quick ways to get this profitable. Let me go through a real quick principle. Um, something Lisa and I learned. We saw this idea, and here's where we are in our finances. We had about $4,000 a month coming into our household from being a mechanic and a daycare provider. That was about our budget. And we were really good with finances. We ran a perfectly balanced household. We spent about $4,000 a month. <laughs> so we were pretty good. And, and so we just totally balanced it. So that's where we were. And I know a lot of people in the room are because that's the way the world is right now. I go into living rooms in America and $89 is tough for people to come up with. That tells me that's where they're at. They have to wait till next check, sneak the 89 bucks out of that, and then delay a payment over here and wait for the next check and repay the 89. That's how Lisa and I were. I totally understand it. But what happens is some people say, oh, this is one of those businesses that costs money to make money. <laughs> if you've ever been a business owner, that's every business. This is probably the cheapest one you're, I mean, I, I, sometimes we laugh at how cheap it is, but remember, because the owners aren't becoming wealthy off it, we can keep the prices in control because we're not trying to make a bunch of money over there off your backs. We're trying to bring it all back to you so we can lower the cost and still share the profits. But what happens is if this is you and you have a balanced budget, so here's, I'll give you my story. So Lisa and I were making 4,000, spending 4,000. We get involved in this business. And after about three months, I call up Eric and said, Eric, this business is making me go broke. I'm going backwards. I can't afford to build this business. He, luckily, he sat down and had the courage to walk me through this. He said, Dan, is it really making you broke or the $4,000 you are spending? You know, was it, was it just the last donut that you made you decided to go on a diet or was it the eating habits all the way led up, right? It's kind of like that was just the thing that pushed me over, the, like the straw that broke the camel's back, right? Just the last thing did it. But then I blamed it on it. And what we almost did is we almost cut back to try and save ourselves and totally eliminate the one thing that could have got us out of that scenario, just so we could balance our budget again. And luckily, Eric sat down and said, Dan, look through this $4,000. Do that thing where that's the first time I tracked that money with that pad of paper because I was trying to find an extra $300. And I told Eric, it's not possible. I don't have it. And I found like five, 600 bucks of extra money, right? It is possible. And if you want to build a business, you're going to have to have the money to build a business. You're going to have to find some money to, to do that. So we just went through our budget. We dropped this down to $3,700, kept the $300. And now we're back to 4,000. So we're just broke again. But at least now we were funding our only way out. At least now we were able to fund our goose that's going to lay the golden egg. We were going to build our business. And it's so crazy because I I remember showing this to a guy about five years ago, and he bought a giant flat screen TV. And the week before, he told me he couldn't afford to build this as a business. I'm like, you could have built this for two years. And he goes, yeah, but you can't promise me that that business is going to work. 
I said, you're right, I can't, but I can promise you the TV's not going to work either. It's not going to give you anything. <laughs> like, I can guarantee you watching that every night, it's not going to lead anywhere. <laughs> like, I already know that. And then you gladly invested there. There's at least a chance here. And I, what we have today, like, I could not not have a better relationship after reading Five Love Languages if I was just willing to apply it. It already added value to my life. Just that one book, it was worth it. I read a couple of books on, on being a dad. And I'm like, with my five daughters now, I'm so glad that those books came into my life. You get rid of everything I have, all my success, that information, I'll be able to at least raise a generation of girls the right way because of that information. It's just priceless information. <laughs> so you got to figure that out. So take some time to figure that out. Don't starve the one thing that's going to get you what you want out of life. Figure out, carve it out. We, Lisa and I, we just decided, I think we shut off our cable and a couple other things to, to just change that money. I, I said, I told Lisa one day, I said, I said, for 26 years, we've watched cable TV, and I don't like the result it produced. Give me three years of not paying for cable and putting that money over here, and let's see what this produces in our life. Just give it a shot. And she fought me tooth and nail for a while to let go of that cable. We were just so entrenched. Like, we got home, it's like, if the TV wasn't playing, we felt weird. You know, I'm like, so we just changed that. We just played a CD instead, or played a DVD, like, did something different. All right, so, so you got to do that. Well, here's the other thing. The other objection you hear a lot of times is, I don't have time to do this business. And it's because most people don't leave an empty slot at night in their life hoping you show up and have a business slot in there. They tend to fill their life with everything. They tend to put stuff in place. And so Lisa and I had two issues when we got started. We didn't have money to build it, and we didn't have time. We had a child. We had a second on the way. We were both working full-time jobs. We were busy. And we're like, man, is it really worth giving up a night to go do this on a Tuesday or to go to the Opens or show this idea? And so we, we, for the first time, had to learn. We literally tracked our time spent with that little calendar thing. So we'd walk around, and I I had actually a notebook, and I'd write down what I spent my time on. And again, it's amazing how fast it changed. It was like, I'd get home from work kind of frustrated, flip the TV on, and I'd be sitting there, and Lisa would say something like, make sure you write that down. (sighs) Man. Or I'd go get the PlayStation out, start playing, and I'd be like, "Uh, okay, I'll just play for half an hour. How many of you done that? I'm just going to watch TV for half an hour. 18 hours go by, you know, and it's, it's, it's amazing how fast time gets chewed up. I met with a, with a big leader of mine the other day who's got a pretty significant business, and he did this the last 30 days, and he was so shocked at where he was spending his time. He couldn't believe it himself. He's like, I, wouldn't have, I couldn't have explained how bad I was with my time until I tracked it. So figure that out, too. Take control of your life. We've all been given 24 hours. Nobody has more time than you. Some people just manage their time better than you. And that's okay. It's, that's something you're going to have to learn to run your own business. You see, a job, you have somebody else manages your time, so you get really efficient at it. Because they have a lever they can pull called your paycheck if you don't. When you own your own business, when you're in business for yourself, that time is your responsibility. The self-discipline is yours. To be successful, you got to figure out how to master that calendar. But if you can do it, you can do those two things. You can figure out where to get the money to build your business, and you can figure out where to get the time. I promise you it's there. The question is, do you have a big enough reason to take the time to do those things? That's really all it takes. Once you have a big enough reason, and you know that this is going to be your way out, it's easy then to carve it. I always said, you always have to pick the destination first so then you can track your day. If you can begin with the end in mind and find something you're chasing, it makes everyday decisions so much easier. Once I realized that, Lisa, we're getting you out of your daycare and I'm getting out of my job, every day, everything I did it was, is this getting me closer to that or further from? And it just became an easy decision. And it just got in the process. So okay, once you make that decision, you find the money, you do those things, here's, here's where it goes from there. To go power player now, you got to be involved in this stuff. So if you're brand new, make sure somebody walks you through and explains this. I know sometimes we get a little confusion. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm on Life Subscription, but Life Library and Life Live are different. So the library is you get all these access to all these videos that are only on that. You can't get them anywhere else. It's Rascal Radio. It's just a self-improvement radio you listen to. Um, and then what it does, it includes the four Tuesdays that you get to tie into to learn how to build your business, to associate with like-minded people that, that are winning at this so you can learn from them and, and kind of let some of it rub off and, and get the success from those around you, from the different people that, that speak in the area, that, that can share, that have already had success, that are willing to help you, like the hosts that you're seeing up here, you know, Jim and Jenny, the success they have, they want to share with you guys. Their, their whole intent is to help somebody else get to where they are. Because if they can help other people get to where they are, it helps them get to where they want to go. It's just, it's a team. It really is help, people helping people. You can't get there without that. So how do you take, make this, this work here? So the process we put into, we go through this five-step pattern. So number one is make a list. You guys have heard this before, but I want to roll through some couple things here. So our first goal, if you're brand new tonight, I'm just going to start with there. 
And then this cycle is kind of every 30 days, This you want this to be your goal. Remember I said, find your parameters, find out what the rules of the game are, then you can set goals and you can track your progress and you can evaluate this every week and every month of what's going on. Your first goal, when the team you're working with, you saw some of the flags up here, people getting recognized, is every 30 days you want to add 10 people to your group. So each circle up here just represents another household that decides, yes, I'm going to try this out and see what this can do for me. And team approach says the whole group starts to work together. And what we're doing then is we're trying to make sure we're plugging every circle into the right steps here. It, it's crazy to think of how fast this could potentially go. Like, if you did this 100% right now, who in here knows that you're never going to do everything 100% perfect? But if would this happened perfect, if you did power player twice, if you went double power player in a, in a short amount of time, and every person you signed up did the things I just told you, you would already be in qualification for your first free trip. Like, do the math. Like, 10 or 20 people times 200 PV is 4,000 points. 10 people, 2,000. You have all, everything set up. Double power player could set you up for these free trips. Isn't that crazy how fast that can go? When you start to put that in perspective, it's like you're a little bit more diligent to make sure you promote the right things to these people because you realize how fast. Do you realize then the, the guy you start tomorrow, you can tell him that? Hey, look, if we do this right, if we start this right and get everything going in the right direction, we could have you qualifying for that free trip really fast. Right? It's just, it just doing the right steps. That's the way we design the business. So how do you do this? You, the goal is to go 10 deep. Well, you have to go through these five steps. You have to make a list. And I always tell people, when you get started, and even tonight, if, if you're in the room, make two lists. Make the first list, when this works for you, what does your life look like? When this works, what does your life look like? Whatever number sounds good to you, pick that number, and then write, make a list of what your life looks like at that moment. When I get there, what, what does my life look like? Because that's the motivator. That's what drives you. Like the, the place Lisa and I live in now, it's, we've always had a dream to have horses in this big, beautiful house. And, and it's funny because we're, we're living it now. Every morning I wake up, I like reach over and make sure it's real. Like, <laughs> I just can't believe it. Like the, the life, the time we get with our kids, the, the freedoms we have, the, the, the non-stressed life we get to live. Because of this stuff, we're picking out horses for our girls. We just had all the fencing put up. We got the barns. I hired a full-time guy like eight months ago that just works for me, and he basically does all the stuff I don't want to do. There's things that need to get done that I used to do, but I could either go mow the lawn, which we have like eight acres of mowed lawn now, or I could spend that time with my daughters. And you get enough money, you just you have somebody else do those things, right? So I can do this. And... He's rebuilding our barn, so he built these beautiful stalls with this iron work in them. I, mean, I didn't know what this guy could do that. I mean, he was really good at it. It's gorgeous. Put up like 20-some hundred feet of uh, three-rail wood fencing. Just looks beautiful. He's putting it all together. We're finished up getting the last horses now so we can get them all. But I'm just, this is so crazy because years ago, we used to joke around about it. Like, yeah, right, someday we'll get to do this. And that was kind of a joke. I remember the first day we, we went to a dealership and we jumped in a, an Escalade and we were driving through this really nice subdivision because they told us to go dream build. And I said, okay, so we're driving through and we were laughing at each other thinking, this is, doesn't even feel right. And then I, and then I remember the day that we were in our own Escalade driving through that very subdivision buying a house. Just, it's just so weird. And then I remember that we decided we wanted to have horses and then that day's coming. And, and the day when, when we decided we had one child and decided to have a second one, a third, and we decided to have a fourth and got a fifth. And... <laughs> But it wasn't, we didn't make a decision based on, do we have enough time with our kids? Do we have enough money to support them? Do we, we weren't, none of those weren't decisions. It was just, man, should we have more? And that, that gets kind of tough if you have kids. Like I, I remember asking Lauren, like, how do you know when to stop when time and money's not an issue? <laughs> right? Because doesn't that, isn't that usually the determining factor for how many kids people have? Right? It's like, there's no limit. What do you do? And Lisa got really scared when I asked that question. <laughs> yeah. But, so make a list of what that looks like for you. <laughs> And then make a list of people that you want to share this idea with. A list of people that you think this could add value to their life and, and you can make a difference in their life and share that with them. When you go, those of you who have built this long enough, it's so hard to predict who's going to like this and who isn't. Like I've showed people that I was so excited to talk to because I was 100% sure they were going to do it and they told me no. And then I very showed this other person not even thinking that it was wasting my time and they get started and they're one of my biggest business builders today. It's just crazy that you can't detect that. So it's not your job to figure out who belongs here. It's your job to expose it to everybody you know and let them decide. And you kind of you get this attitude. You get the attitude that your job isn't to pick. Don't let it frustrate you. Don't let, the goal is to go out there and contact enough people and show this 15 times a month because what we've learned is if you're willing to share this information with people 15 times a month, 
you're going to find enough people who want to do it with you, just the law of numbers, and those people are going to go out, and then eventually you're going to have other people showing 15 of these a month. It just it works. It's just a, a numbers thing. And the business is so much better now than it ever was. It only gets better every month. Here's the crazy thing. Like, what's gotten cheaper over the last 10 years? Like, this business has probably cost you probably a quarter of what it cost me to build 10 years ago. Like, we've lowered the cost every step of the way and raised the profits. It almost doesn't even sound like it mathematically can happen. But when you truly get a, see, it's a, it's a thing of scale because the bigger we get, the cheaper we can produce materials. And because there's no owners taking the money, it keeps the profits high for you and I to share, and it, it keep, makes a business model that can be more and more affordable. But don't shortcut it. Don't shortcut the shortcut. So your goal is to make a list of people, contact them. When you contact people, keep it as simple as possible. Right? Sometimes we get all bound up. I used to, I don't know if there's any melancholies in the room, real detailed. I'll like think about it forever. Yeah. <laughs> right? I'm like, okay, if he says this, then I'll say this. Okay, that'll work. Oh, but what if he says that? Oh. And I would sit, I would literally for hours, a- Amy Marks and I were talking about this backstage because we both had the same fear of calling people. Like, well, what do, what, what do they say? What do they do? And I'd go through all these scenarios in my head and then it'd be like 10.30 at night. Well, it's too late now and I wouldn't call. And I felt like I was working this business hard. I was exhausted. But if I would have looked at my scoreboard, I hadn't done anything yet. I just thought about a lot of stuff. And then I remember one day thinking, it came to my conclusion that, you know, they're already not in my business. So what's the worst thing that can happen? They say no, and they're still not in my business. Like, that's the worst. But what happens if the next person you call is a Dave and Carrie? Or the next person, Jason and Kathy? Right? Or a Roy and Brenda. What, what if they're there waiting for you? Probably all these guys have a story you're going to hear that they didn't come knocking on somebody else's door looking. Somebody handed them. The reason we're the best leadership vehicle in the world is because we go out into the world. We don't wait for the world to come to us. Like this is a push business. Now, you can't just sit at home and put up a sign and hope that people come into your life. Like, that's how most businesses are. Like, if you start a lawn care business, could you imagine you buy a lawnmower, trailer, truck, and everything, and then you go sit on your couch, well, I can't wait for somebody to come knock on my door and ask me to mow their lawn. <laughs> it's not going to work. You have to go out and get the customers. The same thing here. So we're, we're proactive with it. So we're going to make a list. We're going to contact. And here's the trick with contact. And just don't say too much. I, I like this analogy because if there was an information bucket and you're pouring information into it to the, when you're talking to somebody, there's two switches, a curiosity switch and a decision switch. When you call somebody, you start talking to them, and you get so far where you trip their curiosity. There's a how to get started pack, pack three, where Chris Brady in there talks about vital behaviors, what to say, how to say it, how to answer questions. And, but here's the main principle. Say as little as possible to get them curious, and then stop. Like if you have to, do this. Or say, here's a bad connection on Tuesday. Hang up. <laughs> Just Stop. Because what most people do is they keep talking, and then they flip the decision switch, and then it's all over. And I I promise you, you're probably not good enough to to do that over the phone. Maybe with a couple of close friends, but long term, that's not going to work for you. And so the key is, I mean, I had one guy, he goes, man, I called my buddy up. I'm working with this guy. He built a business. He was able to retire by age 29, and now he's helped me do the same thing. Can you come on Tuesday? And the guy's like, he retired at 29? Are you serious? This is for real? And the guy's like, yeah. And then, then he was done. And the guy came. That's, that's kind of raises your eyebrow, doesn't it? 29 years old, the guy doesn't have to work anymore. That, that raises your curiosity, right? So just be as brief, be bright, and be off the phone. And the key is, I, I had somebody say, yeah, but my friends always tell me that I'm trying to trick them because I don't tell them everything. No, just tell them, hey, if I tell you something, I'll probably mess it up. I don't want to mess it up for you, so come check it out yourself. Be as simple as possible so they can come make a decision for themselves. Because it's almost everybody that gets into a Tuesday environment and hears from one of your leaders. Because here's the difference. You're new, you're still doubting that it works. So any question they give you, it, they can see that in your eyes. You're like, oh, that's a really good question. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that one, you know? But if you tell Roy that, he'll just laugh. <laughs> he'll just laugh that I thought the same thing, man. And he'll walk you right through it. Like, there's differences. Like, I love when I walk into a house and somebody says, my mother-in-law's coming, and she said she's going to nail you to the wall. Because she has all this proof that this doesn't work. I'm like, she's going to have a really hard time with that one. And so all I did is I said, tell you what, I said, as soon as she gets in, introduce me, let me shake her hand, and let's get started. Don't let her ask me a single question. And he said, well, she's got questions for us. I said, yeah, just tell her that I'll answer all of her questions after the plan. So she gets in there, I go through the presentation, and she asks for an application. Right? <laughs> because you can't, you can't deny it. 
You know, it's like, I already know all her objections. I've heard them from 1,800 people. I learned how to overcome them over 10 years. That's why I got success. Most people get a few objections and they think they failed and they quit. No, that's your chance to learn how to overcome them. That's your chance to learn how to answer questions. And, and, and But the best way is to have like a Roy or a Jim or, or somebody with you, let them answer the question. I, I would say it's kind of like, here, here's what I see in my head. Like I would come to Eric with my new guy. We'd be next to each other, you know, and Eric's over there. And the guy would say, yeah, but Eric, I heard this doesn't really work and nobody ever really makes any money. And, and at that time, I'm not making money yet. So I'm like, that's kind of a good question. And mentally, I start to like, like, yeah, Eric, explain that one. And then, then Eric gives him a good answer. And then I'm like, yeah, knucklehead, I told you this would work. You know, and I, I'm over here now. Right? And then he goes, well, yeah, but I, whatever. And he has some, like, oh, that's a really good question, Eric. And I go back to his side of the table and Eric answers. I'm like, yeah, you know? But if Eric's not there, or if I'm not at a Tuesday, I'm not where somebody, where somebody succeeded, he'll convince me probably because I don't have enough belief yet. And so the association is so important to tie people into it. So that's why if you get good at not over talking and not saying too much, both in, in any step, in the show and the plan step or the contact step, it's so much easier if you can get people in an environment where they can see someone who's already succeeded because you can't deny success. Like, nobody can tell me this doesn't work. And, and I love it because I Lisa just got a, a Facebook message from a girl. She said, hey, I just want to say hello. I joined Life last night. I went to grade school with you. I'm so excited for your success. It's like, it's just crazy because they knew who Lisa was and now she, they see who she is today. They're going to see that transformation in you. And as you start to exude that, it helps others. So, so get used to doing those things. All right, so make a list, contact, show the plan. And again, in showing the plan, it's the same thing. You're going to tell them as little as possible. That, here's what a plan is. It's make a friend, find a need, transfer a feeling. The other day when I was with that young man, I made a friend with him. I obviously saw his need. He had 105 things written down he wanted to accomplish. And I took five minutes to transfer the feeling that this business will get him those things. I didn't even tell him how. I, I made him believe me that this business will get him what he wants. And he said, I'm in. When do I learn more of what I need to do? Come Tuesday night, they're going to explain the details. And he signed up on the spot. You see, it's, I made a friend. I just, now, it's not to say you're not going to draw out some stuff. I had one guy who's really good. You know those sheets you get for showing the plan? He, he goes to the house and he explains the three C's. And he explains content, commerce, community. Within three C's, he explains a little bit of team approach. So the guy understands that there's a group effort and there's something to lose. And he, and he asks him to join his community right there. And then he says, bring this sheet of paper with you on Tuesday night. And the speaker's going to cover the other spots I wasn't able to get to tonight. Isn't that, isn't that good? Like now the guy's like, I guess I got to go to that meeting because I really need to know what these other things are. I used to explain the whole front of the sheet, flip it over, draw some stuff on the back and fill out a couple other forms. Like there was no need for him to go to the meeting. Like I told him more than the, I used to get, I used to bring people to meetings and they'd sit through and be like, well, you told me way more than he even just said. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, maybe that's the problem. You know, it's a PDCA. Maybe I should not say so much, right? So that, this is just priceless. Like it's not about everything. It's about making a friend, finding a need and transferring a feeling. And you could do that very quickly. Just use one of the concepts in there and let them come to a Tuesday. Cause then the Tuesday is the belief bump. It's like kind of like what you're saying, but you're obviously not succeeding. I don't know if I believe you yet but I can see how this might work, all right? And then they come to the Tuesday and they see a bigger picture. So you go through these lists and you, you go through this process and you're going to get good at it. Now, here's the thing. All you have to do is get good at these. So what starts to happen is you make the list, you start building a team down, and then you start playing team approach. One of our biggest keys, and I'm not going to cover this tonight, get together with your people helping you, is team approach. Because what team approach says is you're going to get a lot more success working together as a team, and you're going to probably get pushed up that chart faster than, than you personally could. And I love our compensation plan because what we've done is we said, let's get it in a position where the first group of a team working together is my commitment to any team I start. Every, every, every new group I've started, when I start somebody, I say, here's my commitment to you. I'm going to work underneath you in this business until you're to the top of the chart. If you want to do something with it and make some money outside of me, go right ahead, but I'm going to just drive you up that chart. And so what it does, it kind of levels the playing field. We're saying everybody's going to get an equal share of the success in the first group. If you want more, you have to go to the next stage of power player where it's you start working with this system. So this is where the life training comes in and the marketing plan. Like we have training in a system to help you move these products and get people started. You work together, get the first 10, and then you're going to come over here. And basically what you're saying when you come over and get your second five and go power player is that you listened here, watched your mentor and learned how to do this. And then you've duplicated it over here. And now you've proven that you've learned. So this is just the verification that I paid attention over here. And the faster you do that, I was telling a group a couple the other day that we were getting started. I said, I want to get you power player as fast as possible because that's where it goes from where you're spending money to where you're making money. And so that's as fast as a decision as you want to make it. It took me a year and three months to go power player. I do not recommend it. I do not recommend it. I was slow. I, I was afraid to call people all these reasons. And I have people in my business that in three weeks do this. And they're a profitable business model. 
And, and so you do this as fast as possible. So power players, those things, it's getting involved in all the pieces where you're going to learn. Now, the people who get good at this are the ones who learn how to duplicate this. What I just told you, starting people right, getting them in the right steps, in the right pieces. Because here's the danger. When you get started and you're brand new tonight, you're here tonight because you got two tickets. So your next step is to make sure you figure out how to get on these so you have your, you pay, so you get to go to next month's seminar. But after your, after your first seminar, then you want to get on Life Live. So you make sure you can come to your, your ones after that. And I just love the package because to get the free trips, you got to be on 200 points. To go power player, you got to be on 200 points. And so it all fits together. If you just make the right decisions for your business, it puts you right in that process. Now the key is after you make those decisions, get into this process as fast as possible and work as close as you can with the people that have already proven to do it. Right? Work as close as you can to those leaders I was telling you to, to let them help you master this process. Because this is all you got to get good at. This is all you got to get good at. And how do you get good at it? It's a matter of we probably all, hopefully we've all gotten better at our jobs. If I went to your job tomorrow, I would really mess it up. There's no difference. You see, it's, you don't have to be at the end to begin. You got to start. And, and I started to walk through this process. I said, what's cool about this is you have people that want to help you. See, we, we don't go where we want to go unless we find a bunch more people to take with us. This isn't a company. We actually, some of the founders were offered a chance just to create a leadership business where we just sold our leadership materials to the world, made millions and millions and millions of dollars, and people liked our information. And they, Warren Woodward and Chris Brady actually said no to that because they said everything they've learned, they learned through doing this business. Everything they have is because of their community that they've helped. And they said, this is the best place to learn leadership and to give leadership is this type of vehicle. So the world doesn't quite understand us yet. Sometimes you'll show people and you're like, I don't know, that doesn't quite look like the vehicle to get me where I want to go. Isn't that one of those things? And our mission in the next five years is to change that picture. Our mission is to change that picture. And the only way we change that is by going and doing the right things, is by mastering these steps. And how do you master steps? Back there, that tool room, we set them up at every meeting. Everything that, that I was actually part of the tool committee. So when uh, myself and a bunch of other leaders, and a lot of you are working with Bill and Jackie Lewis, Bill headed up that, that committee. He's just an incredible leader. So Bill and a bunch of other leaders, that, that I'm not going to go through all the names, we got together and we all looked through all of our materials and we thought, what did we need to get successful? What did we use? How did we do it? How, when we were going through those steps, what helped us? What, what tools did we give to people? And we sat and we spent months going over it so we could put together information back there that literally is the step-by-step approach for you to succeed. And so the one who's going to win the biggest in this room is the person who figures out how to leverage those tools the best and leverage these meetings the best. It's just the way it is. Like That was my biggest advantage growing this business is that I was too shy and too quiet and and felt too incompetent. I had no self-esteem to think I knew anything. So I desperately leaned on the materials, the association, and my mentors because I just felt like I knew nothing. And that would, that paid off so well for me. I was actually on stage and all I could really tell you was make sure you give people a first night pack when you talk to them. Like that's all I did. Like I made the tools work for me. So what you do is those tools back there, we set them up in a, in a perfect process of we have packs one through 10. And so if you're wanting to learn this business, I recommend a couple of things. One, get a hold of all those packs because what they do is they, they're supposed to walk you right down the path. And then as you're working with people, it kind of does the same thing for them. You give them pack one after they learn pack one, you give them pack two. What do you think you give them after pack two? Real complicated, right? But I, I, we don't want you to have to be super successful to understand how to do it. So we wanted it to be a systematic approach because you want each one of these 10 people armed and ready to go and be ready to go out there and help you attack the next 10 without having to know a bunch to go out and do it. Like one of the powerful things about the McDonald's franchise is they've created a simple, duplicatable way to produce the same desired result time in and time out. That's kind of the e-myth by Michael Gerber said. He said, the more predictable the result you can produce, the faster your business can grow because it doesn't take so much time to develop the people to be able to do the skills. The system's already developed. And so the better you get at using those tools and using them into your business, the faster your business will go, and it will actually outrun your leadership and outrun your ability. And then that's what's cool. You use those tools, your business kind of runs out ahead of you, and then all you got to do is work on yourself. All you got to do is work on becoming the leader to fill into your business. You're like, hey, I'm the leader. Wait for me. And that's, that's what our group did. We did the whole thing. We got a culture of using those tools and, and going through this process. And so we go through this whole thing. We, we rotate that pattern. We tie people into these things. That, that solidifies our business. And then once a quarter, we bring all the greatest leaders throughout North America, fly them into one location to something we call a major convention. 
Yeah, absolutely. And obviously some of you have been there. You know what that's about. And it's kind of one of these things where we just keep ramping up your level of learning. And that's where the person, you go down there. And I remember the first time Lisa and I went down there. We were plugging into this. We were just starting to kind of, we weren't even doing any of this yet. We were just kind of learning it, trying to go in. And somebody said, if you really want to understand what we have our hands on, get down to this thing we call major leadership convention. So everybody flies in, though. From, uh, somebody asked me, well, is it worth it for me to go? I'm like, well, people come 36 hours from Canada to go, and they think it's worth it. So I'm assuming it's probably worth it. People fly from California and have airfare and all these other costs. They believe it's worth it. Thousands will come from, from these different areas. And here's why. When, when you get to that point, that's where you get to hear from all of the founders. You'll probably get to meet them all. You get, I mean, you get to see the whole picture. It brings all of it together for the biggest leadership meeting we put on a year. It's only three times a year. And I know tonight they have those tickets over there too, because that again is a piece. That's a tool to build your business. That's where somewhere you can get an entire weekend. I believe if you're brand new, it's still $100 for a brand new person. They get a discount. If you're new within the last 90 days, and it's 150 for the person that's been around. And so, so here's my point with that. You get into that stadium where there's tens of thousands of people together that are deciding that they're going to do something special that we're going to do something unique. You see, I truly believe with all my heart that it's kind of, it's a silly little process, but the reason we're so good why we're going to make such an impact is like I said before, we go out into the world and into living rooms and we find auto mechanics like myself who had no clue that I could ever do something like this until someone decided to walk into my life and show me a little bit bigger picture of myself. And you guys are going to walk into people's lives and they're sitting there looking for a better way. There's people at night right now, I promise you, going to bed with tears in their eyes, wondering how they're going to fix something in their life. Having an issue in their life, and they don't even know that you're out there. They don't even know that you have all this information sitting in your trunk that could save their life, change their life, until you go out and reach them. And you see, we're going to go into living rooms. I believe in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, I believe some of the best politicians will come from the life organization. Right? I really do. I believe... The, the little skill sets you're going to learn to build your business are going to become foundational that work on a small level, work on a big level. And because people in life business go from living room to living room to house to house to person to person and help real people solve real problems, they could definitely go to Washington and help solve problems. You do it on a level. Right? I, I believe... In 20 years from now, because we did these little steps and went out there and served people and led them to better information, help people, I still believe that there'll come a day when we're sitting around campfires with our kids or our grandkids, and they're looking back, and they're saying, Dad, Mom, you guys were around when America wasn't doing that well. You guys were around when the divorce rate was skyrocketing. You guys were around when kids were, were fatherless. In the, at a young age and getting into crime. You guys were around when the national debt was out of control. You guys were around when there was just taxes were outrageous. You guys, and they're going to look at all the things that you and I went through, and they're going to say, what was it like when you go to those meetings with those life entrepreneurs that decided to give their, their all to fix it? What was it like? What were the people like? like? It had to be just a small group of people that actually still cared. It had to be just a few that were willing to go out there and actually work for a living and not just take a handout. How did you, how did you guys turn it? And we're going to be sitting around a campfire, and I can't wait till I can share your story with them and what you did in this time to make that happen. I'll see you guys soon. While no one can guarantee success, many have proven these ideas to be powerful in building a successful business. For more information regarding the life business and its compensation plan, visit www.the hyphen life hyphen business dot com use of life training materials in building your life business is strictly optional unauthorized reproduction is prohibited all rights are reserved this is a copyrighted program of team